Welcome to Trade Pro. In this video, I'm going to go over some easy tips and tricks to improve your results using a trend following trading strategy. I need to address this topic before getting into the FTMO challenge update because I've noticed a lot of people seeing what I show in the 100 test videos or on the FTMO challenge videos then thinking that is the correct way to be trading or placing the stop loss or doing the take profit or whatever they see in the video is the way that they should be trading it. But what you need to keep in mind is what I'm showing in those videos is not optimized whatsoever. And the stop loss placement take profit target or general way of trading is often terrible because it isn't optimized or properly tested. The point is to give you guys plenty of ideas to work with so that then it is easier for you to build your own trading system. So don't think that the way I show a strategy is the exact way that you should be trading it. Do your own optimizing and change things to make it better. I will show some things now that can help you make the results better. But remember, you need to do some thinking of your own sometimes. So let's get into the different things that can help you out with confluence, stop loss, and etc. The first thing I want to address is using multi time frame trend direction analysis and not being blinded by what's happening on the 30 minute trend in a massive four hour downtrend. So let me show you an example. And let's say that you have a 200 period EMA on the 30 minute time frame where I'm at right now, and you see price come up above that 200 EMA. Should you instantly think that it's time to start looking for longs only because it's now above the 30 minute time frame 200 EMA? That's not the right approach. Let's zoom out to the four hour time frame and see what's actually happening in the longer term. What's actually been happening all this time? Well, we have a massive four hour downtrend that's been going on for quite some time. So what's the better idea to start looking for long positions or to wait and look for a good short opportunity? Well, I definitely say that you're better off waiting and getting in at an area of value. So right now, it doesn't look like a good time to actually be taking a long. I mean, you might be right. You could be right and get a successful long position. But remember, we're trying to put the odds in our favor over a series of many trades. And how many pullbacks that looked like this along this whole trend turned ended up just dropping down? Many pullbacks along the way that look exactly like this pullback ended up just dropping and continuing the downtrend. So maybe what you want to do is hold off. You could maybe even look for an area of value, meaning whatever you do to determine this is up to you, but you could, I don't know, check out a trend line and say, maybe this is the area of value. Maybe you could use the 200 EMA and say, when price comes up here, we're going to be at an area of value. You can just visually look at it and say, all right, this is kind of in the middle of the highs and the lows of this trend. So maybe if it comes up a bit more, we're looking at an area of value where I could look for a short for a continuation of the overall downtrend. But essentially what I'm getting at is to only use just the fact that it's come up above the 30 minute time frame 200 EMA and say that that is the trend direction. Now it's in an uptrend. We're only looking for longs isn't the best way to go about things. And I know that's what I'm doing on the FTMO challenge and that's how it's been shown on some videos. But that's what I'm trying to explain to you is that's not the best way to do it. You need to optimize and find the best way to do it, okay? So that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I'm gonna get on to a stop loss talk now. All right, let's go over stop loss placement as a trend following trader. So first, what is an uptrend and what is a downtrend? Well, an uptrend is obviously higher lows and higher highs and a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. But how does that help us determine where the stop loss should be placed? Well, it tells us where our analysis is invalidated. And that's, of course, where you want your stop loss to be. When you know you're wrong or that you're likely wrong, you want to get out of the position to not let it turn into a bigger loss. Okay. So let's go over an example here to show what I'm talking about. So in a downtrend, what are we looking for again? Lower highs and lower lows. So clearly this is a downtrend. What am I actually looking for to enter a trade? Well, pretty much if you watch this channel, you already know I'm looking for pullbacks and then I'm looking to enter the main trend and join it for a continuation. 
So in this case, I'd be looking for pullbacks. So pullback, 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 lots of green pullbacks here along the way. So I'm looking to short on any of these pullbacks. Now, how do I know where to actually place my stop loss after I get an entry on one of these pullbacks? Well, let's think about it. Where would my actual analysis be invalidated? What do we talk about? What is a downtrend? I'm looking for a downtrend to continue. What do I wanna see? I wanna see a lower high. So let's say that I short on this red candle right here because my analysis says this pullback is likely coming to an end and I'm looking for the downtrend to continue and go down so I'm shorting. Well, where do I want to place my stop loss? Is it right above the swing high here? No, that's not right. You want to place it closer to the previous pullback because remember, we're looking for a lower high in order to validate our idea that we are currently seeing a downtrend and looking for continuation of the downtrend. What would invalidate our analysis of that downtrend is by there being no longer a lower high. Okay, so you want to place your stop loss, not right here, but maybe you could be looking above this high here, this high here, this high here, somewhere close to the previous pullbacks high. All right, so it's very simple. We're just looking for an area that invalidates our analysis. And if it ruins your risk reward ratio too much, doing it all the way up at the top, at least you could get a little closer. You maybe use this pullback right here as your stop loss placement. But you get what I'm saying? We're trying to actually have our stop loss placement have a meaning with our analysis to where it invalidates what we're saying or what we're thinking is going to happen, okay? But that's pretty much it for the stop loss. Really simple. We want it to invalidate our analysis and our analysis is a continuation of a downtrend. So we're shorting a pullback. Okay, so that's it. Let's get on to the next one. All right, next thing I want to talk about is moving your stop loss closer to your entry or to break even or into profits in order to protect your position and minimize risk. Now, a lot of people mess this one up because they'll choose some arbitrary number like moving their stop to break even at a one times risk but I suggest you do it a different way. So let me go over an example here. So as we discussed in the previous video, we're going with the trend. So let's say this is our pullback here that we're looking to enter a short on. This is the previous high that we wanna place our stop at. So let's say our short entry is right here, okay? Here's our short entry, here is our stop loss, and let's just say that we're targeting two times the risk, okay? This is just a random setup, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So price eventually starts going in your favor after some drawdown. And what you wanna do, or what I suggest you do, is wait for a consolidation and then a breakout of that consolidation again in your favor before you ever move your stop loss. So again, you wanna see price go in your favor, into profit, consolidate, so this is a small consolidation here, but it's a consolidation nonetheless. And then it breaks out again on this candle here in your favor. So that is where it's much safer to actually move your stop loss to break even or just minimize risk or maybe slightly in a profit. Or you can go halfway there on the first consolidation and if you see a second consolidation, move it into profit but you wanna have a reason to actually be moving your stop loss so that you don't end up getting stopped out right before price then goes again in your favor and you're going to minimize the chance of that happening if you follow something like this where you're just waiting for price to go in your favor, consolidate, and then break out again in your favor, okay? So in this example, once again, we get this little consolidation, just green pullback, red candle, and then we get the breakout right here on this candle when it closes. This right here is where you would actually be able to move the stop loss closer to your entry or to break even, whatever you wanna do uh, to minimize risk um, if you are gonna follow how I suggest you do it, okay? So I think that pretty much covers the things that I wanted to go over. Um, you know, guys, um, just always remember this, the stuff that I'm showing on my channel with all the different strategies, 
I haven't optimized any of those things. I don't have time to go through and optimize each strategy before I post the video on it. So um, the idea is to give you guys ideas on a bunch of different strategies so you can put something really nice together for yourself. So I'm trying to be helpful in the process of uh, you creating a good system. I'm not trying to hand you my system or a system that's already fully ready to go that doesn't need any work, okay? So just keep that in mind and thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, have a fantastic day. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe. Comment down below for the YouTube algorithm if you appreciate the videos. And thank you very much. Appreciate all of you. Have a nice day.